Listen, with the first pick, we took Nick Bolton, a local uh, uh, college player from University of Missouri. And um, I, I, what you're going to get with him is uh, just a all out, aggressive, smart football player. Not the biggest guy, but uh, very, very tough, um, great tackler, great ball skills, and um, uh, in the pass game part of it, and uh, tremendous leadership. So we look forward to bringing him on board. Um, and then Creed Humphrey uh, from uh, Oklahoma. Um, Big kid that, again, is extremely smart. The thing you'll notice with him is he can snap with either hand, natural left-handed snapper, but he could do either one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, he's best probably with his left hand. That's his natural hand. <clears throat> but he's taught himself how to do it also right-handed. Uh, great great feet and work ethic and, and then a, a big man. And so Creed will be a nice addition to that offensive line. Uh, my hat goes off to Brett Veach and his um, – his crew of, of scouts and uh, and really the whole personnel department there of just batting down and uh, taking the best players at, at the spot once we got to this position, uh, taking the best players that were there. It takes discipline to do that. And, um, and Brett did that. And um, I think we came out with two good football players. Obviously, time tells, but um, – they sure were good college football players. We think it'll transfer right right into here in Kansas City. Both good citizens too. Good good kids, and uh, they'll be great in the locker room for us. Anyways, with that time, George. Let's go first to Herbie Tob. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach. Good evening. Always a pleasure to see you as always. Thanks, sir. Hey, um, reference Nick Bolton, and I know you still have to go through OTAs and training camp, but based on what you've seen in his production at Mizzou, is, is he a kind of guy that you could probably project to, to immediately contribute, kind of like what you had in mind with Willie Gay last year? Yeah, so he can play the Mike linebacker position, but, but he can also play the other positions there. So, um, <clears throat> yes, he can. Uh, we, we had a bit of an advantage that we have Andy Hill on staff, and and he coached him so uh, and knows him personally, um, which, which helps. But um, we, we felt that he could help us in any of the three positions. And you can't have enough of those guys. We're a little bit short just on bodies and, and at that at that spot at our linebacker spot. So uh, this this helps us there. Go next to Dave Scretta. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, good evening, Andy. You mentioned that you know you took the best players on your board and. And that's always the case, I know. But these two guys also seem to fit two of your biggest needs. Um, would you would you say that's pretty accurate? And how delighted were you that that the board actually fell that way? Yeah. Well, we listen. We we knew there was a, a good group of uh, offensive linemen, um, and so you figured there would be an offensive lineman there potentially. You're hoping it was one that you you liked, um, and then. <clears throat> um, uh, the linebacker spot was a bit thin, uh, but again, the way it fell, um, you know, th this this kid, uh, uh, I thought it was a no-brainer uh, when we got to that spot. I mean, you, you put on the film and the, you know, you watch him play, and which I'm sure most of you guys have that you just see he jumps out at you. So um, uh, that wasn't that wasn't too tough of a, a choice there, but. Um, and listen, there's some other good players. Up there. I'm not saying that, but the, these were two of the guys that, that Brenna targeted before uh, we even got into the day here. So he was hoping that they would be there. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Andy. Um, Humphrey is now the fifth offensive line that you guys have added, and counting the two guys who are opting back in. You're, you're basically at a total makeover here at your offensive line. And, and it, it was obvious you guys were going to make some changes there, but was this maybe more that you, than you anticipated when the off season began and Brad, I'll have one quick follow-up also. Well, no, listen, we hadn't done a whole lot to that, to that area for a bit. And we've got, you know, we've got good players coming back too. So uh, we've got this great competition that'll take place. And Adam, that brings out the best in all of us. So, um, and, uh, you know, as a player, you, you sit there and I, I've talked to the guys about this. I mean, Brett's going to go do his job and he's going to try to keep the competition high. And, 
And uh, let's not run from that. Let's attack it. And what it'll do is if you handle it right, it brings out the best in you uh, down the road. So embrace, embrace the competition and keep on working to make yourself even better and thus the team better. And that's what, that's what Brett's done with, uh, with the offensive line. He's just added some, uh, some great competition in there. Yeah. Okay. And um, hey, we heard from Brett last night about Orlando Brown, but this is our first chance to talk to you since the trade. I'd like to hear in your words, what you liked about him, how you think he fits. Yeah. So um, Orlando, I mean, we know he's, he's a big, big man. Uh, the part that you don't know is how much he loves football. And so he comes in and um, with, with a reputation here the last four years and during college of a kid that will be a leader in the locker room, leader amongst the offensive line, um, and also uh, somebody that loves the game. And those are all important things to us. So he does he have to get in here and work his tail off and he'll have to learn a few new techniques and that. Uh, again, all to make him better. Um, uh, and does he have room to continue to grow? Absolutely. Even, even though he's been a two-time Pro Bowler here the last couple of years, he's, uh, one of the great things about football is like being a farmer. There's always work to uh, be done. So, and, and so um, he'll, he'll do that. He'll, he'll get in here and work his tail off and, and get better. But uh, some of those um, intangible things I, I sure like. And then Again, we've had a chance to play against him here a couple different times, and he's a, he's a physical, you know, physical guy. So we 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 like that too. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Andy. Uh, thanks for doing this. Hey, just wanted yeah. to ask you. Um, just wanted to ask you what you learned about Nick and Creed in the pre-draft evaluations. Did you get a chance to talk with them on Zoom? And just what did you maybe learn about them that the tape doesn't show? Yeah, so I, I sat in on the Zooms. Um, I kind of kept back up, back off on it so we could get accomplished what we wanted to get accomplished with it. Um, and, the, and so the coaches, the position coaches did most of the talking. <clears throat> you, the coordinators and the head coach, we kind of sat back and chimed in only when when needed there. But it, it, um, it was great to let these guys talk about football, talk about their life. Um, where they're at, what, you know, how they perceive going forward here as a professional. And um, so I, I was, you know, I did listen to these two and uh, impressive. I, you know, I've got a special place in my heart for Missouri. So I, I, I've had to kind of sneak in on that one and, and listen. Um, and then <clears throat> Orlando told us to go get Creed, you know, when he was here, he goes, there, there's a good one in Oklahoma. You need to take a peek at. So we had already, uh, had our eye on him, but um, it, was, it was neat for Orlando to, uh, you know, put it out there to us that way. We'll go a few more. We'll start with Sam. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Andy. Right, um, Sam. How, how quickly do you feel like Creed can translate uh, to the mm -hmm. next level? And do you view him strictly as a center or is he a guy that could maybe play some guard? Yeah, he could do either. He's a good athlete, you know, so he could, <clears throat> you know, probably could play all three if we had to go that route, but um yeah so uh, we'll just see we'll see how he does i mean it's a competition part of it you know how andy does it with uh playing the five best and so he's gonna give everybody an opportunity to show what they've got and we'll, we'll figure it out but that competition i mean i can't say that enough uh you, you bring that competition in the pitcher and it just makes everybody better and thus you know in, that, in this case the offensive line better <clears throat> Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Brad, I'll just have one quick thing after this, but um, Coach, we won't get Steve Spagnuolo for a while. I know if you're taking Nick with your top pick, he had to sign off on this. What uh, was his take and, and what makes him a, a Steve Spagnuolo type of linebacker? Yeah, well, he makes plays, and so and he's smart. Uh, he makes all the calls uh, or made all the calls at Missouri, and we felt like he could do that here. Steve did, and um, – you love his attitude. Uh, you love the whole story. I mean, you guys are going to get a great story with this and, and just with the kid and how he, you know, came up through the ranks here. So, um, you know, it, it's a good, solid, good, solid person and a heck of a football player.
And then just, I, I know you're not into comparing to, to previous seasons, but it seems like there'll be competition for at least three or four offensive line spots. How excited do you get about this in-house tape that you're going to get to watch this training camp battle? It's going to be for really a lot of the offensive line positions. Yeah, I mean, you guys know how I feel about it. I mean, you're as good as your offensive line and defensive line are. So, <clears throat> you know, it's a, uh, it's obviously important spots. Um, uh, so I, I love the competition that, that we've created. Like I said, we've, we've had good players here. So, uh, but this, this even adds to the competition level and it should just make, should make us better. We'll go last to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey coach. Thanks for the time as always. You, bet, Matt. Um, you know, you mentioned that Nick is a little bit undersized. Is, is that just an evolution of that position, you know, with the linebackers role having to do more and more, especially with multiple receiver sets? And I mean, is that something that when you're going up against a team that's got a linebacker who can move around like he does and has that ability that you got to scheme around a little bit differently? Well, you guys know I'm, I'm familiar with small linebackers. I had a great one from Kansas State play for me. So at Philadelphia. And, uh, and so uh, this is... Uh, this is no different. Um, he moves around well. He, he can cover in the pass game, the RPO game. He's got a good feel for that. Um, and he, he still can shed and get off of the big guys. And that becomes important. <clears throat> so, you know, it's, um, I'm expecting him to play as sweet as your shirt looks here. <laughs>